Um, it's discussed in multiple ecumenical councils. Mary as perpetual virgin. Now, as you know, you would you would refer to Mary as I Parthenos, which means ever virgin, was a title that was utilized for Holy Mary by multiple fathers, utilized at Second Council of Constantinople in the 500s, either 554 or 553. I don't want to butcher the date. I don't remember one of those two, but I know it was there. But it's also uh, Pope St. Leo refers to her as ever virgin in the, in the Tome of Leo. So it's, it was believed well before then. Mary as perpetual virgin father, is that an important teaching of the faith? And what do the Orthodox believe in regards to that? Yeah, no, we, we do accept it. It's in the 50 Ecumenal Councils, in the basically the decrees of 50 Ecumenal Councils, the title given to her. So it's basically dogmatic. Now, it is important. And the reason being um, is something I was, well, I think it would be helpful to now to, to talk about is, mm -hmm. is why is she the mother of God? Yeah. And uh, this goes back to um, the incarnation. But it also goes back to what it means to be one of the epistasis of the Trinity, what mm -hmm. it means to be Christ. So when we define Jesus Christ, he is the son of God, the only begotten. So when we talk about the epistasis, we're talking about a manner of existence. So there eternally exists a manner of existence, which is the only begotten son of the father. Mm -hmm. um, and that's basically his definition. That is what his epistasis is, his only begotten son of the father. Um, there's, a, there's a little bit more to it. Now, according to his divine nature, he's God out of God, true, um, light out of light, true God of true, from true God, begotten, not made, same essence as the father. All these things that point to his divine nature as the son of God. But his man of existence is the only begotten son of God. And when he becomes incarnate, his humanity has to have the same manner of existence. He has to be only begotten son of the father. So he, he can't be have brothers and sisters or anything. He's got to be the only begotten son of the father. So in the union, for him to, um, to be union, he, for the reality of the come together <laughs> has to be only begotten son and then mother of god of course is um the mother of jesus christ the, the person the epistasis who is god and man and so she becomes um in a sense the same the or her relationship to the divine and the human has to be the same so because it, it, it's because she is the mother of the epistasis her relationship to epistasis has to be same to both natures, so that it's one epistasis, the same manner of existence according to her, as well as it is eternally to the Father. So she must be become the mother of the man and the mother of God. Um, and so it, it, this is a really amazing mystery that now that the mother of God and in the incarnation, in a sense, becomes ingrained in the existence of the Trinity. Something new has happened with the Son, and that she is now a permanent, eternal fixture as that helps to define the Son of God. He has one mother, both to his divinity and his humani humanity. So she's truly mother of God, and that is now what the Son is. And this is why when we become sons of God as well, we too must take her as our mother. But the other part was as, He's only begotten. In other words, he's the only son. And so for Mary, he must, she must be the only, her only son. It must be true also for her as mother. And so in that regard, she can, he, she is, can only have one child, which is him. So she never had, was to have a child before or after. So mm -hmm. she's only simply got one child, which is him. So that he remains only begotten son according to his mother as well as his father that's his manner of existence now the if a virgin is also to do with um her incorruptibility and in a sense a woman when she has makes love has a child becomes broken uh, the, um, she becomes corrupt in her body um there is a sense of something broken the mother of God never becomes corrupt in any part of her body. And so the whole process of giving birth, she never 
damages her virginity as such, even the sign of that, even in the giving of birth in, in the miraculous. So she never suffers any corruption and everything's done purely and, and holy. Um, there's also the sense of spiritual sense of once you understand the purity of the mother of God, once you understand um, the purity of holiness, detachment from passions of the flesh, etc., that there's no way that the mother of God at this level of purity would ever contemplate um, a sexual relation because it's, that movement of passion would be so contrary to her stillness, her calmness, her inner yeah. peace with God that, that it, I, I like, liken it to throwing her into a cesspit. It would be just so gross for her. It would just be so impossible for her to contemplate. <laughs> that, and, and I think people who are caught in the worldly way of life and the worldly feelings and stuff don't really understand how uh, incompatible um, that sort of passionate relationship would have been to her um for her to be in the state of purity to for the incarnation so there's multiple levels but theologically because he's only, the son is only begotten is the mother of god can only have one child and that must be the son so that is an important theological dogma it, it could be no incarnation and this that it was true you bring up a very a very good person there i'm good person i'm thinking about the, the utilization of christological terms there you bring up a very good point a uh, very, very good point. A number of good points. Um, Christ being a, a divine person, uh, that's very important. I think uh, we, we sometimes get tripped up in Christological terminology and we can unwittingly fall into heresy if we're not very careful with our language. But you bring up a, a point that I have um, really, really tried to hammer home for the past three years. Um, uh, that being that uh, uh, Mary, is, uh, Mary as ever virgin is so tied in with proper Christology that they go hand in hand. And we see that in the early church. Uh, um, in fact, if you look at the, uh, you don't find early fathers denying Mary as perpetual virgin. Those early figures that you do find denying it. Uh, a case could be made for Tertullian, who, as we know, um, died outside of the church, was a heretic. Was not, it's not an early church father in the sense of a proper uh, a figure that we venerate, or uh, that we have a, a feast day honoring. Unfortunately, he died outside of the church. So, uh, you, you, you correct me if I'm wrong, but from what I am hearing, Father, and I would agree with it, uh, Mary as ever virgin seems to have been a uh, uh, a pillar of orthodoxy within the early church, as it said something about Christ as well, and it had something to say about Christology as well. Is that correct? Yes, yes. Uh, it's it, it just, as I said, it, Christ could not be incarnate. He could not be truly the only begotten son in his humanity. So when we talk about his humanity being what the Ipa starts is what we mean is his humanity must be the only begotten son of a father. Um, and so that's why he doesn't have a human father. He must be the, 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 the she must be a virgin in a sense, no human father. That's the other point is, is most God is his father. Um, and so it, it must be true to his humanity and his, uh, and his, and his, as, his as it is his divinity, because he must be the same epistasis. He must have the same manner of existence according to both. And therefore, as I said, he's only begotten. He's only, there's no other sons of God and he can't, not, cannot be, can only be one. Um, this must be realized in his flesh and therefore his mother must be the mother uh, must not have any other siblings or ch children as such so that he's truly the only begotten of of her as well so she in a sense has to almost comes like the father has the same relationship to both natures um so that his one the manner of existence be only as only begotten son of a father is true according to both natures. That's the only way you can have the perfect union of the man and God in the one epistasis. And it's about being only begotten son of God.